Hey guys, what's up and welcome back. We are back to our AWS management dashboard and we see the entire process to understand that how exactly you can create a new network interface that can be attached to any instance. You can associate multiple IP addresses to the same instance or I would say the network interface and then you can detach it and you can attach it to any other instance in the same availability zone or I would say subnet. Now to get started, let's go to EC2 under compute section so that uh, we can just go to the EC2 dashboard. Now let's click a launch instance and we will launch one instance from scratch. I'll pick any one of these AMIs and click on select. And we'll just go with the instance type that's the t root micro, which is free tier eligible and I will straight away go to review and launch and click on launch. I will choose one of the existing key pairs and click on launch instance. Now you can see that this instance is launched. I click on this instance ID so that I can view this instance and once this instance is up and running then we can just uh, start creating a new network interface and we can associate that interface to this instance. Now before that, I just name this instance as instance A and click on save. If we check its primary network interface, we can just go to networking and you will see that under network interfaces, this is the primary slash default interface that's automatically attached to any instance when you launch it. So this is the primary slash default elastic network interface. Now this is the public IPv4 address assigned to it and this is the associated private IPv4 address assigned to the same interface. Now these two different attributes, the public IP and the private IP, if you check the instance details, they are same because any IP address assigned to the interface, the network interface attached to any instance the attributes will be linked to the instance. You will see that the public IP address and the private IP address, they are same. So whenever you attach any interface, the network interface to any instance, which has a public IP, elastic IP, or the private IP, the same attributes are being linked. They will be associated to the instance as well. Apart from that, we also make note of the subnet because that's very important. Subnet or the availability zone. So the availability zone is AP South 1A. So if I want to attach an extra network interface to this instance that we just launched, we have to make sure that the availability zone slash subnet should be same. So this is the subnet ID. So I have to make sure that the subnet should be same at the time when I create or manufacture a new elastic network interface. So I just go ahead, I will click on the network interface on the left hand side. Now you can just go on the left hand side and you will find that under network and security where we can access security groups, elastic IPs, placement groups and key pairs, we have network interfaces. Let's click on that. and we will create a new one. So this is the subnet where my default slash primary elastic network interface is located into. Now this one is an extra or additional interface. I can get rid of it. So let me just go back to the network interfaces once again. And uh, I will just get rid of this extra or the additional interface. I don't need this. So let me just delete it. And that's been done. So this is the default slash primary network interface which is being attached to the instance that we have just launched. And we have to make sure that the secondary elastic network interface that we're going to manufacture should be created or should be done or this, it should be located in the same subnet. So I click on 
create network interface at the top right hand corner and I can include a description so just type in for example secondary ENI and the subnet would be the one that uh, is the same where my instance or the primary slash default network interface is located into so my subnet this is the subnet in which to create the secondary elastic network interface now it will auto assign the public ip before before address to this interface i will just set it to auto assign and that's it you don't have to enable the elastic fabric adapter this is the advanced concept make sure that you include a description include a subnet you set the private ip v4 address to auto assign and then the next thing that you can do is that you can assign a security group to this secondary elastic network interface that we're going to launch or we're going to manufacture so i choose one of these security groups which already exist i can add a new tag for example i can name it this is the key and the value for example secondary ENI. Now this tag would be visible if I just go to the network interface dashboard so I can recognize that or I can easily detect that this is my secondary ENI which stands for elastic network interface which I have just launched. I click on create network interface and that's a simple process. So this is the secondary ENI. I can tag the top one as for example I can just name it as primary slash default ENI that's it click on save now once you tag these different elastic network interfaces you can easily recognize that which one of these two is primary and which one is secondary now once you do that the next thing that we have to do is that we have to attach this secondary elastic network interface to the instance because if you see the status so this is my primary on the top and the, this is the, the secondary that we have just manufactured if you just go to the right hand side you can see the status for the primary is in use because it is attached to the instance right now but the secondary eni is available because this is being manufactured however this is not assigned to any instance at this moment it is being detached it's available to be used now to attach it to my existing running instance a i will simply just choose this elastic network interface let's go to actions and you'll get different options out there just go to attach and you have to choose the instance and click on attach now you will see that the status will change to in use and to verify that i will just click on the instance id just just go back to instance dashboard and I just go to networking, scroll down, you will see that these are the two different interfaces attached to the same instance. The topmost is the primary one and this is the secondary one. Now, if you see the attributes, for example, if you look into the private IPv4 address, which ends with 25, this would be associated to this instance. Now, if you just scroll up, you will see that the same private IPv4 address is being linked to my instance. So these are the two different private IP addresses. The topmost has been extracted from the primary slash default elastic network interface. And this is the one which ends with 25. This is being extracted from this secondary elastic network interface. So that's how you can assign multiple private IPv4 addresses to the instance by linking multiple network interfaces to the same instance now let's do one thing let's explore different properties or different attributes of this secondary elastic network interface so what i will do is that i click on this secondary eni interface id let's go over there and let's choose it go to actions and these are the different attributes that we can explore the first one that we need to look into is the change source distribution check 
now we can disable it because by default it's enabled now just in case if you're running some services like NAT which stands for network address translation or firewalls so in this case you can disable the source slash destination check so that the instance can process the traffic which is not destined for the instance for example, if you're running services like NAT or firewalls, in that case, you need to disable the source slash destination check flag so that the instance can process the traffic even though the, the same traffic is not destined for the instance. And click on save. The next thing that we need to look into is the termination behavior. Now, by default, if you terminate the instance, the associated elastic network interfaces would also be deleted. Now, you can change it if you want. You can just go to action and click on change termination behavior. Now, this is disabled for the secondary elastic network interface. Now, if you want this elastic network interface to get deleted on instance termination. So, as soon as I terminate my instance, this secondary ENI should be deleted automatically in that case just check enable otherwise you can just click on save however if you look into the primary interface go to actions and just click on change termination behavior you will see that it is enabled by default because by default the default eni slash primary eni will get deleted automatically upon the instance termination but for the secondary ENI so additional interfaces that you assign to an instance if you go to the termination behavior it is disabled you have to enable it in our case we want to ensure that this is preserved or this network interface is not deleted upon instance termination so we just keep it to uncheck or disable this option now I will again just go to secondary eni and the next thing that we have to look into is the management of different ip addresses that is assigned to the same interface so i will choose this go to actions and i just click on manage ip addresses and i expand it now this is the private ip address assigned to the secondary elastic network interface if i click on assign new IP address and I set it to auto assign then it will automatically assign a new private IP address to this secondary elastic network interface and I click on save click on confirm and you will see that once I just go back to actions click on manage IP addresses I expand this you will see that a new private ipv4 address is being linked with this secondary network interface now i can associate one elastic ip or maybe i would say that one elastic ip each to one of these private ip addresses let me show you how we can do that so i will just go back to the main page and on the left hand side we have a bunch of options let's go to elastic ips now once we just go to elastic ips this is the elastic ip which is already ex which already exists let me just get rid of it i release it from my account and i allocate a new elastic ip so i will just click on allocate elastic ip address at the top right hand corner and then make sure that you choose this one amazon's pool of ipv4 addresses and you can assign a new tag to it or you can just keep it as it is click on allocate now this will allocate a new elastic ip address to your account so you can see that the elastic ip address is being allocated successfully the next thing i will do is that i need to make a note of the secondary eni id because once i get into the process of associating this this elastic ip address to the interface it will ask me for the interface id so i just go to the network interfaces i just make a note of this secondary interface id and then i just go back to elastic ips dashboard make sure that you have 
select it, this elastic IP address, go to actions, or I would say you can just click on this elastic IP. Let me just click on this once again and click on associate elastic IP address on the top. You have the option to choose the instance, but in this case, we'll choose the network interface. We'll select or paste the interface ID and we choose the private IP address. So we will assign it to the first private IP v4 address that's being linked to this elastic network interface and click on associate. Done. Now we'll repeat this process for the second private IPv4 address of the same elastic network interface, the secondary one. I click on allocate elastic IP address. I will allocate a new elastic IP to my account. And I click on this, click on associate, choose the network interface, choose the same interface ID. I choose the secondary private IPv4 address that I manufactured. Click on associate. Done. Now I go back to the network interfaces. I click on the interface ID, go to actions, click on this option, manage IP addresses. And then I expand it. You will see that these are the two different elastic IPs that are being linked to each one of these private IP addresses. So this elastic IP slash public IP is, is associated to this private IP. And this one is associated to this private IP. So these are two different elastic IPs which are being associated to each one of these two different private IP addresses. Now I go back to the instance A and just show you the networking. You will see that under networking, you'll be able to access or you'll be able to see different types of, I would say different interface IDs or elastic IP. So if I show you right now, let me just go to the networking. You will see that this is the new private IP that's being showing up. However, if I just go back to details, these are the two elastic IPs assigned to the instance automatically because these are the two elastic IPs that I associated to the secondary elastic network interface. Now they are a part of this instance A. They are the part of this instance A. So I linked two elastic IPs to my secondary elastic network interface, which is being attached to instance A. Hence, the same attributes would be associated to my instance. Now, let's do one thing. We will just go ahead and launch another instance. So I click on launch instance. I have to make sure that it's being deployed in the same subnet. So I click on launch instance, choose one of the AMIs, the same instance type, click on next configure instance details. I will just pick the same subnet where my previous instance and the elastic network interfaces they're located into. Click on review and launch launch. I will choose one of the existing key pairs and click on launch instances. Now you will see that this instance is launched. I will label this instance as instance B. Let's do that. Done. Click on save. Now once I label this instance as instance B, the next thing that I will do is that I will just uh, go ahead and associate or link the secondary ENI I will detach it from instance A and move it over to instance B. Let me show you. So if I uncheck this filter, my instance A, if I just go to networking, has two different elastic network interfaces. It has two different elastic network interfaces. So let me show you. If I just go back once again to the main page, let me just go back to EC2. So if I just go back to my instance A, click on this instance ID, we will see that under networking, sometimes it shows up here. This is the secondary ENI. Now this secondary ENI has two elastic IPs attached to it. 
which have been linked to two different private IP addresses, I will detach the secondary ENI from instance A and I will attach it to instance B. And you will see that the attributes, including the private IP before addresses, even the MAC address and the elastic IPs would be carried over from instance A to instance B. So the attributes of that secondary ENI, including the MAC address, the elastic IPs, and the private IPs would be detached or would be disassociated from instance A and associated to instance B because I'll be detaching the secondary ENI from instance A and I will be attaching it to instance B. So the, the properties of instance A would be carried over to instance B. And before I do that, if let's go back to the network interfaces and show you the secondary ENI, let me show you that. Every elastic network interface will have a MAC address. This is the MAC address of this secondary ENI, the secondary elastic network interface, which is being attached to instance A right now. So even this attribute will be carried over to instance B once I detach it from instance A and attach it to instance B. So let's do that. I go back to the instances. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's go back to the network interfaces. Choose the secondary ENI. Click on actions and click on detach. Now this process, sometimes it will it will take a few seconds or few minutes because uh, the process of detachment will take some time. Click on detach. So I need to ensure that this is set to available. It's, it is still in use. So this is a, a process which can take a few minutes to give you some output or show you exactly that this is available. So I'll just keep on detaching it. Now you can see it's, see that it says fail to detach. There's an API error. It says it does not exist. Now this will take some time. Okay, this is available now. You can see that this is available. So you have to give it a shot once more. So just in case if it doesn't shows you any status is in use just try one more time and most probably it will work so this process has to be repeated twice or thrice just in case if you see that your eni is not being able to detach itself from the instance now this secondary eni is completely available and if i just go to the actions and right, let's click on the eni id you will see that it still retains all the different properties, including the MAC address, the secondary private IPv4 address, the primary public IPv4 address. This is the elastic IP. This is the elastic IP. This is the primary private IPv4 address. So if I just click on the actions, go to manage IP addresses, expand this ENI, you will see that the attributes are still linked to this available secondary elastic network interface. Now let's do one thing. I will just choose the same secondary ENI, go to actions and click on attach. This time we'll choose instance B and click on attach. Now let's go back to the instance page. I click on the, or I choose instance B, go to networking and you will see that the same attributes would be carried over and they will be linked to the instance B. Because if I just hit refresh one more time, just to ensure that uh, we can see the updated stats, you will see that the secondary ENI is a part of this instance B. It carries over the elastic IPs slash the private IPv4 addresses with it. And the same would be linked to my instance B, including the private IPv4 addresses. And if it is called details, the elastic IP addresses. Now, consequently, as a consequence, any traffic that was previously destined for instance A would not be rerouted to instance B. So you can use this mechanism, this process to achieve a low cost, high availability solution. So for example, if this instance is my primary instance and 
status B is the secondary instance. So if status A goes down, I can just um, detach the secondary E and I from the instance A, attach it to instance B, all the attributes will be linked to instance B and consequently the traffic will be rerouted. So this gives you the fair idea that how exactly you can perform this failover and this is the complete demonstration of your elastic network interfaces. That's it. Thank you so very much.